Hey guys, Mike here. So this is a good video about beginners who want to pour their own concrete floor, and I'll tell you why. It's, it's a pretty small floor. This is about a seven and a half yard concrete floor. We're matching the top of the wall here, so this is really similar to if you had set up some forms, like some two by sixes or two by eights, and you were matching the top of those forms. So we're going to be screeding right off the top of the wall. Now the first thing I like is we're pouring about a 3,000 PSI concrete with fiber mesh. Now we are pouring on styrofoam just because the building codes in this town call for styrofoam. But this could be right on dirt or right on plastic. It would be the same thing. So we're using a 3,000 PSI mix here. Um, we also have a mid-range water reducer in this. And what the mid-range water reducer does is it allows us to pour a little bit looser slump. You can see that's around a six or a seven inch slump without without hurting the strength of the concrete at all. So when you order your concrete, you know, you just tell the batch man, hey, I want a mid-range water reducer. And then you can pour it a little bit looser like this without having to worry about affecting strength at all. So what we're doing is we're pouring out, now because we do this every day, you know, we pour out about 90% of the floor first before we start screeding. Now you don't have to do that. You can you can just do about half of it or about the length of the screed right there which is about 12 to 14 feet whatever you're using for a screed and then get that section screeded first and then pour out some more. So you can see how we're screeding that now. We're using a wet pad in the middle which we which we shot with a laser to make sure that's level with the outside of the top of the wall. And then the other guy, which is over there on the right, that's Luke, he's screeding right off the top of the concrete, which is basically like screeding off top of a form. The guy on the inside who's screeding off the wet pad, he just needs to be nice and careful that he doesn't dig down into that pad and he doesn't ride high on it to create a high spot. He just wants to make sure he's he's scoring with the screed as he's running it over the top of that pad. And that makes sure your floor gets nice and level. And now we'll just switch. So the guy that was on the outside of the form before now takes the inside. And now Darren's gonna jump on the outside. That's the simplest way probably to screed. Now you could you could run a 2x4 down the middle where that wet pad was and, and set that to grade and screed off that and then pull it out afterwards. I guess if you're not confident enough to screed on a wet pad like that. But we just weren't taught that way. We were taught to wet screed like we're doing here. So I think, you know, you may not be able to go as fast as us, but I think just by just by trying it and going nice and slow you should be able to get this down now this is seven and a half yards here and, and typically most companies give you about 10 minutes per yard so you're going to have you know about an hour or maybe a little bit more than an hour to get this down so you'll just need to make sure that you got enough help you know two or three people to help you if you're going to try to pour floor like this by yourself we got plenty of guys on this one because we just came from another job. This is like 8 o'clock in the morning right here. We've already poured a big house, which was about 5 miles away at 6.30 this morning. We got that poured, and now we're jumping over here to this one. And then I'm going to stay and, and finish this one myself, and that's coming up towards the end of the video here, so make sure you hang out for that. And then Darren and Luke will go back, and they'll finish that house floor. So we're doing two a day which is what we typically do in the summertime. We'll do a couple of these a day. And we just, the guy we're doing it for is uh, the guy in the back there in the dark blue sweatshirt. He does the foundations. So he's just, he's just helping us out today, just get these dumps so we can get them in real quick. Now you can see how I'm bull floating that. After we screed, we just run that bull float over the surface and you can see how that really smooths out the screed marks pushes down the aggregate and it brings up some paste to the surface and that's the surface you want to power trial. You want a nice smooth bull floated surface when you go to power trial. And when you pour a slump like that, a six or a seven slump, the bull floating is actually pretty easy. Typically you only have to run it down and back just once. 
if the if the slump is a lot drier a lot stiffer than that then you may have to go over it two or three times to get it that smooth lately we've been using the bull float the knuckle on the bull float which allows the bull float to tilt one way or the other when you turn the handles is we've been using one from superior and I'll show you a picture of that right here that's the best one that we found now it's not on this one I didn't have it when I had made this video but recently we've got it and we put it on our bow float and that's the one we, we really really like it's really smooth operating and for you guys you know wanting to know what's the best knuckle out there I would recommend this superior one for the bow float You can see how I'm just following behind the screen. I'm getting everything smoothed out. And then, if you also notice, I'm in the shade here today. There's a bunch of trees around. The sun's really not up that high yet because it's still early in the morning. So, we're not in a real big hurry getting this down. Other than, you know, we want to get Luke and Darren back to that first job. So, they make sure they don't get behind on finishing on that one. That laser we use too is that Topcon RLH5B. That's the one I recommend using for concrete floors. I'll have, there's a link for that down in the description. You guys want to check that out. So I got the finishing process coming up. So what I'm doing now is I'm just what I call magging my edges, making sure all my edges are filled really nice so there's no little holes or gaps between the, the wall and the floor. And now I'm setting my power trial down. I like that crane. I got a crane with a winch on it, and that really helps me out from having to lift the power trial myself. I get that crane right at Harbor Freight, and you can mount any any winch on it. You can mount, just hook it up to the battery of your truck, and that'll help you know you guys unload and load your power trials. So this was about an hour and a half after we got done pouring and bolt floating. The sun came up, you know, the shade's gone. Most, about 90 some odd percent of the bleed water's gone. And I can walk on the concrete and only sink in maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That's when you know it's time to get on it and start power troweling. Now I got other power troweling videos that teach you how to power trowel in the concrete underground. And that's in the link down in the description below. If you guys want to learn about really how to pour and finish concrete, um, Screeding, power trialing, all that training is in the concrete underground in more depth, so you can check that out. I'm going to end up going over this thing, you know, probably five times before it's completed. So I, I hit it with a power trial, and then I let it dry for a while, and then I hit it again, and then each time you let it dry for a little bit and hit it again, it's smoother and smoother. The key is knowing, you know, the timing in between. And that basically comes down to, a lot of it plays into the temperature of how hot out it is, whether you're in the sun, whether you're in the shade, it's windy. It just takes a little bit of practice. I'm using a 30 inch trial here today too, I'm not using one of my bigger ones. So what I'm doing now is I'm measuring out for my saw cuts. I'm just going to, we're going to saw cut this once down the middle each way to help control any shrinkage cracks. And that's pretty standard for us on concrete floors. We saw cut all our concrete floors. You can see how that crane lifts that up for us. Loads it right back in the truck. Now we'll clean that off. I'll take my margin trial and clean off any little paste on it. Clean the blades off, clean the rim off, and then we'll, we'll load it back in the truck. We're going to snap a chalk line right here. And we're going to use that chalk line to go by when we saw our cuts in the floor. I'm using... This used to be called a soft cut saw. Now it's Husqvarna bottom out, so now it's a Husqvarna. It's a Prowler X150 is what it's called. And I'll have a link down there too if you want to check this out. This is what we use for cutting the same day. For you guys doing floors, I mean, we don't like coming back the next day because we usually do at least one, if not two floors a day. So if we, if we had to constantly go back the next day to cut floors, I mean, we would just never get caught up, but that's just, to me, that's a waste of time. You might as well buy a saw that you're going to cut the same day and then not have to go back. It's going to pay for itself, you know, in just a matter of a few floors. You can see how Darren runs that down, and then 
And then that's it for this floor. I mean, it's all power trowel, nice and smooth. It's saw cut. We sweep off the, the cracks, and that's it. So, again, guys, check out the Concrete Underground. Subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos, and we'll see you on the next one.